In a landmark year for defense indigenization, the Defense Acquisition Council has cleared a DRDO-developed electronic warfare suite for the Indian Air Force's Mi-17 V-5 helicopters. Part of record acceptance of necessities worth Rs 1.30 lakh crore in 2025, the upgrade enhances survivability against modern missile threats. Built with over 90% indigenous content and produced by BEL, the suite strengthens at Minerva Bharat, while extending the Mi-17 fleet's operational life well into the 2040s. India's indigenous six-ton hail UAV program has entered a decisive phase, with ADE seeking partners and CCS clearance. The high-altitude, long-endurance drone is designed for persistent ISR at around 40,000 feet, with five prototypes planned. General Atomics may support design maturity, while production and IP remain Indian. Using proven turboprop engines initially, the project aims to cut import dependence and lay the foundation for future armed hail platforms. The Indian Army is exploring robotic platforms equipped with magnetic anti-tank mines to counter enemy armor. Designed to crawl toward MBTs and APCs, attached to hulls and detonate, the system offers a stealthy low-cost kill option. Building on existing EOD robots, the concept could be deployed from several kilometers away. Intended for special forces and frontline units, the move signals a shift toward robots as direct combat enablers in future battlefields. Turkish media has triggered controversy by claiming Greece declared war after evaluating India's WAP-8 by 8 armored vehicle. Analysts dismiss the report as sensationalism, Greece's interest is part of a routine military modernization drive to replace aging M113 and BMP-1 platforms. The WAP is being tested for island and coastal operations. Defense experts stress such procurement evaluations are standard practice and do not signal any shift toward military escalation. Serving Royal Thai Army personnel have raised serious concerns over the Chinese-built VT-4 main battle tank, citing frequent mechanical failures, electronics issues, and unreliable gun performance. A barrel rupture during 2025 border clashes intensified criticism. Crews increasingly trust older T-84 and M-60A3 tanks for demanding missions. Similar problems reported by Pakistan and Nigeria suggest wider reliability and quality control concerns undermining confidence in the VT-4 despite its modern systems and competitive pricing. India's long-range air defense program is nearing a key milestone as DRDO prepares the first flight test of the Project Kusha missile. The M1 interceptor with a 150-kilometer range has completed critical motor trials and features an AESA seeker with dual-pulse propulsion. Planned M2 and M3 variants will extend reach to 250 and 400 kilometers. The Indian Air Force plans around 10 squadrons, underscoring Kush's strategic importance. India has taken a major step toward armored self-reliance as DRDO's CVRD reconfigures the Datron 1500 automatic transmission into a modern T layout. Integrated with an indigenous 1500 horsepower engine, it will form a fully Indian power pack for Arjun tanks and future combat vehicles. The redesign improves compactness, cooling, and maintenance, while embedding lessons from earlier trials, paving the way for foreign free propulsion systems. DRDO has confirmed that Indian Army user trials of the Zorawar light tank will begin this year marking a key step toward induction. Starting in Ladakh, the tank will be tested in extreme high-altitude conditions, followed by desert trials at Pokhran. The Army's feedback will refine the design before an initial order of 59 tanks, paving the way for a larger future induction of nearly 350 vehicles. India's directed energy weapons ecosystem has reached a new milestone, as Belgium-based startup Carbine Systems successfully tested its first laser weapon prototype, Hyper Amplification Radiant Array MK1. The 10-kilowatt class system, with a reported range of up to 2 kilometers, 
is the first known DW developed entirely by a private Indian startup. Built on proprietary beam combining technology, the prototype reflects a shift in India's laser weapons landscape, long dominated by state laboratories. If scaled and proven outdoors, HARA could emerge as a future counter drone and point defense solution, strengthening indigenous high tech combat capabilities. Prime Toolings has reaffirmed its confidence in achieving a 10 kN thrust milestone by March 2026, despite early propulsion trials stabilizing at around 6 kN. Originally designed for 8 kN, the program has evolved through repeated firings and design refinements. Engineers are leveraging data on thermal behavior, material response, and flow dynamics to push performance beyond initial limits. Company officials describe the process as a deliberate test and learn cycle rather than a setback. If successful, the 10 kN benchmark will mark a major boost for India's indigenous propulsion capabilities and validate the firm's iterative engineering approach. Pakistani analyst Dr. Zafar Nawaz Jaspal has warned that protecting nuclear facilities from sabotage and accidents is critical for nuclear armed states. While military sites are heavily guarded, civilian nuclear facilities remain vulnerable, especially in conflict-prone regions like South Asia. He highlighted the importance of the 1988 India-Pakistan non-attack agreement, under which both sides have exchanged nuclear facility lists for 35 consecutive years. However, Jaspal cautioned that advancing missile technologies, mistrust, and weak crisis management mechanisms increase the risk of accidental escalation. He urged both countries to modernize confidence-building measures to prevent a potential nuclear crisis. India faced sharp dual pressure on energy as U.S. President Donald Trump backed a bill proposing up to 500% tariffs on countries buying Russian oil and announced Washington's withdrawal from the International Solar Alliance. The move comes ahead of the arrival of U.S. envoy Sergio Gore, who has called ending India's Russian oil imports a top priority. While Europe welcomed India's reduced purchases, the Russia Sanctions Act is advancing rapidly in Congress. Indian refiners have already cut intake. Meanwhile, the U.S. exit from the Solar Alliance is being seen as a setback to global renewable energy cooperation. That's all for now. Hope you like this video. Please like, share, and subscribe for daily news updates. Thanks for watching.